Well, hi, everybody. So good to see you. Um, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about uh, living on campus and roommates and what you have to do this summer to get yourselves ready. Um, I have a, a PowerPoint to kind of walk you through, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So let me just kind of start with um, uh, what I plan to cover. I want to talk a little bit broadly about the experience of living on campus um, in the first year particularly, but I want to kind of give you the four-year overview so you, you understand, you know, what, what this uh, relationship is going to look like with, with Augustana and this community um, over the entire course of your college uh, career here. Um, I want to talk about roommates, uh, how you can find a roommate, um, share some information about the buildings, the residence halls themselves, and then we'll kind of go through some next steps of uh, things you can be thinking about this summer. All right, so Augustana is very much a residential liberal arts college. Uh, the fact that everybody lives here, this isn't just a school where you go to school. This is a, a place where you become a, a deeply invested member of the community, uh, the bonds you form with your classmates and with uh, faculty and staff here are really what distinguishes uh, a, a place like Augustana from um, colleges that, you know, either not everybody lives on campus or, you know, more of an online format. So that's been what's kind of been, been painful for all of us for the last uh, couple months of doing so much virtually because we, we lose so much of, of what's uh, important to Augustana. Um, when you come here, you do live on campus for three years. Um, and we have what's called a transitional living model. So uh, you will live with your class cohort for the entire time you're living on campus. Uh, we've got some buildings dedicated specifically to first year students. So in year one, you'll be living with other people who are going through the same things you are, who are just as eager as you are to, to make friends and build connections and join organizations and you'll be living it together. Um, Year two, we have some dedicated spaces for second year students. And, you know, in year two, you have a lot more choice in terms of uh, picking your building, picking your room. Maybe you've got a whole group of friends that want to live on a wing together. You, you can start to make those choices. Um, we have different types of housing available for sophomores. It's not really just the traditional res halls anymore. Uh, year three is kind of cool. Year three is, um, and I'm probably jumping ahead on a slide here. Okay, so. Yeah, year one, year two, year three. Year three we call the transitional living area. So we actually have a, a collection of houses and apartments that are college owned residences. It's living on campus, but it's gonna feel like you're living off campus. Uh, in year three, you'll have, um, for the most part, a private bedroom. There's a few doubles, um, but there will be a kitchen. There's private bathrooms. So you're not doing the, um, the communal bathrooms anymore. Um, Year three, you have the option of either scaling back your meal plan or getting off the meal plan entirely if you want to try your hand cooking and shopping and all that fun stuff. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of the dining hall, uh, but that's just me. Um, and then year four, students move off campus. And, and I know where you're sitting right now, the thought of kind of moving off and getting your own place is a little intimidating, but the nice thing is because of this model, by the time you get to year four, you're ready for it and everybody goes through it together. Um, we have got a really great group of landlords who um, own properties in the Augie neighborhood. And basically all of our seniors um, live right near campus and they're not required to. You could, you could rent anywhere you want uh, your senior year. Um, but I think that just the, the, the pull of being a part of the community and staying connected with Augustana um, nearly all of our seniors are living within walking distance to campus, um, right in the same neighborhood where many of our, our transitional living area uh, spaces are. Okay, now as we kind of go through this four-year sequence, um, year one, we focus hard on community. We really challenge our students to get invested in the community, and that starts with your roommates and your floor mates. Uh, it, it spreads out to student organizations, um, to Greek life, uh, we want you to build connections with other people, okay? That's what year one is really all about from a res life perspective. Um, year two, we're going to challenge you now to start thinking about uh, what's my purpose? Uh, what are my goals in life? What do I want to do? Um, this is the year most students settle on a major. Um, what is it that you're good at? What are your passions? These are the questions we're going to press you to really try to resolve and try to think critically about in your second year. Uh, 
year three, we are gonna challenge you uh, to prepare for the future. Year three is all about transitions. Um, you sort of simulate living off campus for a year. And then in year four, you, you actually do it. You go live off campus for a year. And that's really cool because when you graduate, you're gonna probably move to a new city. You're gonna have to rent a house uh, or an apartment. And you had a trial run here while you were at Augustana. So you've had the experience of, of working with a, a landlord, with signing a lease. Um, you understand what happens if you leave your lights on all day and your, your energy bill goes up, or you, know, you, you like to take those long hot showers and your water bill goes up. Um, you get to experience that before you kind of uh, leave the college. So that, that's kind of the four year progression. And what, did you see the wiggle? I spent a lot of time doing that uh, in quarantine. Um, all right. So let me talk a little bit more about some specific uh, opportunities within the first year experience. Um, we have, so there's one program and this is um, uh, something you can choose to apply for separately. Um, definitely not required and definitely space limited, but we have a, a special program called the Residential Learning Experience or RLE. Um, if you uh, get selected to be in an RLE program, um, the idea here is that you are gonna live together with a group of 16 students who are all taking FYI 101 together. And every first year student is gonna take FYI 101. Uh, the distinction with the RLE is that you also live on a floor with the people in your class. So you, you live together, you learn together, you're gonna get a lot of intensive exposure with that group of 16. Um, and we have theme areas for our RLEs. Um, the three themes for next year are gonna be sports, sustainability, and film. And the two things we do with those themes are one, we, we've got professors lined up who uh, are also really into those theme areas that will be teaching the courses. Um, so, you know, if it's something you get geeked out about, your faculty member also gets geeked out about and you can just geek out with each other, it'll be great. And all 16 of you will, will be into the same thing. Um, and then we're gonna uh, plan a, a series of kind of field trips and outings and activities uh, to go along with the theme, either to, you know, films or local sporting events or things like that, um, just to kind of create some shared experiences outside of the classroom. So um, definitely would encourage you to consider the RLE, particularly if you have an interest in any of our theme areas for next year. Um, if you go to the new students page, you will see the, the landing site for the RLE. You can watch the little promotional video um, and there's a really short application where you just indicate why it is you're interested and we will we'll get you registered for that. Okay. Uh, the other thing you can opt into, which is sort of a, a special um, option for first year students is what we call the healthy living community. Um, and healthy living is a, a, a group of students who specifically are committed to living drug and alcohol free at college. Um, we, we have students who select this for lots of different reasons. Um, you know, maybe to kind of support academic uh, rigor. Um, you know, many students will have cultural or religious values uh, where they, they don't necessarily want to be surrounded by drugs or alcohol. Um, and others just have, have health and, and uh, wellness uh, considerations. So whatever your reason, um, healthy living is available to you. It's simply a checkbox on the housing application. So if, if that's what you want, you just check that box and we just wait and see how many people check it and we, Put them together in a, in a wing. We usually have enough students who want this that we actually have a healthy living community in all of our freshman residence halls. So it isn't building specific. It's definitely scalable. Um, it can either grow or shrink depending on how many students want to do it. But the idea is that you will be living with other people who kind of share in that commitment. Um, so that's also an option for you. So those are, are two sort of special opportunities we provide for first year students. Uh, the RLE is space limited. You do have to apply. It's on the website. You'll be able to find it. Healthy living is not space limited. It, you just have to tell us you want it. You just have to opt in. Okay. All right. So let's talk now about roommates. There are really two ways you can go about getting a roommate next year. Um, you can select your roommate. And as long as they also select you, uh, you will be placed together. Or not. You don't have to select a roommate. Um, and uh, I track this every year because that's something I do for some reason. Um, and on average, we have about 60% of our incoming students who do not select a roommate and 40% who do, okay? And either way is equally fine. And let me kind of talk you through how that's gonna work. 
So when you fill out your housing application, it's going to ask you some lifestyle questions. And I, I can see that many of you have already completed your housing application. So we're going to ask you about your alcohol use, about smoking and vaping. We're going to ask about your study habits, um, about how social you want your room to be, if it's kind of the, you know, um, the social room or it's the, the, the sanctuary that you use to get away from everybody else, um, how you feel about sharing, what time you typically like to go to sleep and wake up in the morning, and how clean or messy you generally keep your room. And based on your responses, we can do a pretty good job of matching you up with a compatible roommate. So if you just answer those and do nothing else, we'll find somebody that you can live comfortably with uh, your first year. And like I said, that's about 60% of our students. Um, it's important to be honest when you are filling out this form. Um, tell us who you really are, not, not who you ideally are. Um, and if parents are in the room, um, invite them to go take a walk. <laughs> So you can feel free to be very honest as you're filling this out. We're not, you know, there's no judgment here. Um, we just, we want you to have a successful roommate pairing. Um, and make sure your parents don't fill this out for you. Okay. You also can create what's called a roommate profile. So if you don't necessarily have a person in mind that you want to live with, um, you can actually search the system to find somebody. Um, and again, if you don't, we'll do it for you. We'll match you up. But you can use any one of those questions as a search criteria um, to filter out people who answered uh, the way that you would want your preferred roommate to answer. And you can invite them to be your roommate. Um, you can also write a little profile statement, which will be displayed to other students who might be searching you. Okay. So you do all of that through the same place where you fill out your housing application under personal information, just create a roommate profile. Um, under, I, I believe it's called housing selection, you can actually search for a roommate um, and see other people's profiles. So you're welcome to search. Um, there's a button where you can click to invite someone to be your roommate and they can either say yes or no. Um, and if they say yes, then you two are linked in the system. And when we do housing assignments, you'll stay together. Uh, and again, you, you can do that or not. You don't have to do any of that. We will definitely pair you with a, a good roommate if you all you do is fill out the form, okay? All right. Okay, so let's talk now about the buildings. Uh, we have three residence halls dedicated to first year students, uh, Westerlin, Seminary, and Andreen. Um, the buildings are randomly assigned. So we really put all of our effort into getting good roommate pairs. Um, to us, the building is not critically important because we know you can have a great experience completely regardless of what building you're in. It's not, it's not the bricks and the mortar and the paint and the tile uh, that makes your experience, it's the relationships with your, with your roommates. So we'll get those roommates matched up well, and then we will randomly you know, cascade people into, into bedrooms. Um, so you don't get a preference, you don't get a pick, uh, focus on that roommate. Uh, in mid-July, we are going to share with everybody their housing assignment. So if you didn't pick a roommate, you'll get your roommate's information at that point, and you'll get your building and your room number. And we've got a really cool feature on our website where you can uh, learn a lot more about our halls and houses and even view floor plans of specific rooms. So if you, and, and for the most part, they're fairly similar within a building, but there's some variation. And um, we had one of our awesome staff members um, who's really good with CAD go through and draw every single room. Um, so you can actually see the footprint of what your room is gonna look like and you know that can help you plan how you wanna arrange things um, or what's gonna fit, what won't fit. Um, so check all that out on our website, um, but wait until July when you get your housing assignment. Um, our buildings all have card access. So your ID card is what unlocks the front door. You just, it's a proximity card that you wave at the entrance and the door will unlock. Um, and then you have to wave it a second time to get into your hallway because each corridor is limited to the students who live there. Um, students, any student can get into the front door because our, our communal spaces are meant to be, you know, for the community, um, for the lounge and that sort of thing. But once you get into the residential part of the building, that's restricted to those who live there. Um, we have laundry facilities on site in every building. Um, in the residence halls, it's a card operated laundry system. So when you come to campus, you'll purchase a laundry card that has credit on it. And it basically just works like a debit card where you swipe it in the machine. Um, there is a way to go online and, and put, uh, or you basically buy codes that you can uh, recharge your card with. 
So if mom and dad want to help by, you know, paying for your laundry, they can buy codes online for you to recharge your laundry. Um, point of all that is you don't have to bring a big uh, pocket full of quarters for laundry when you come to campus. Um, the standard furnishings are kind of what you see in the diagram here. Uh, a desk, a chair, a dresser, and a bed. Uh, the beds are twin XL, uh, twin XL. That's important to know because the bed you're sleeping on right now probably isn't twin XL. Uh, we have XL because you know that's great for our basketball players and we don't have to get special beds for them. We just know regardless of how tall you are, you'll fit well on any bed. Um, so if, if you're doing any college shopping this summer, um, usually if you go to the like Target or Bed Bath & Beyond or places where they have a big decorate your dorm section, the bedding there is usually twin XL because that's pretty standard on college campuses. But if you're ordering something online, make sure it's twin XL. Um, don't just pack up the things on your bed right now and think that they're going to fit because they probably won't. Um, also, I'd like to share that we do have 24-7 uh, on-call staff. We have um, student staff who work in Res Life who are always available, and we have professional staff who work in Res Life who are always available. So we are very much here, very much a part of the community, and you know, whatever issues, problems, concerns may arise, day or night, weekends, evenings, uh, we're always around. Okay, so let me talk now about next steps. Um, first of all, uh, you're gonna have to apply for housing. Uh, you will find the link on our website. Um, it's housing.augustana.edu. That will take you right to the application and kind of the, the self-service landing page where you can do your roommate profile and all that. Um, you just have to apply by June 30th, okay? Because we, we shut down the application at June 30th and thereafter we'll take late applications, but it's really everybody who applies up until June 30th that is in the hopper for roommate pairing. Um, and if you apply late, then you, you basically, you know, we'll find a room for you, but you know, you'll, you won't have quite as much of a, a robust matching available because everyone else will basically be assigned at that point. Um, so please apply by June 30th. Um, and then we spend the first couple of weeks in July doing all that matching and making assignments. And we will notify you by mid-July of what your assignment is. Um, Move-in dates are going to be August 26th and 27th. Um, and we will have a lot more information about how move-in works on our website when we get a little bit closer. All right, a few other things to think about this summer. Um, if you would like to have your bed bunked or lofted, um, you can order those. We have a partner company called bedloft.com and they will come and build the loft or the bunk for you before you arrive. So the room will be set up. There, there is a fee for that. Um, we always tell people wait until you get your housing assignment because uh, you know, depending on the room and the size of that room, you may or may not want it, okay? Um, and bedloft.com does need to know your room number, so you can't even place an order until you have a housing assignment. Um, but, you know, you, you can't build your own loft just for safety reasons. We, you know, we've got all the supplies. We know how to do it safely. If you want one, order it online. Um, you'll find the link on our website. Um, medical accommodations. So if you have any sort of medical condition that might influence the type of housing that you need, um, the most common request we get is for central air, filtered air for those who have uh, some sort of uh, respiratory uh, issue, either severe allergies or asthma. Um, not all of our spaces have central air, okay? Um, most of them do and enough to accommodate everybody who needs it. But if you need it, there is a special medical accommodation request form. And again, you'll find that online. You need to tell us what your needs are and you need to attach a doctor's note. Um, and then we'll make sure that the housing assignment you get is suitable for your medical needs. Um, so whatever it is, let us know by June 30th um, and we'll, we'll get that taken care of for you. Um, you can rent a micro fridge and you don't have to, you know, if you want a fridge and a microwave, you can bring your own. There are size limits, they're on the website. Um, I really do recommend you consider a rental um, for a couple of reasons. One is they're, they're delivered at the beginning of the year and picked up at the end of the year. So you won't have to carry it in and carry it out. Um, if it breaks, they will service it. And um, I can tell you most people, that's, that's a, an appliance that you don't need after college. Um, so unless you have like a lot of younger siblings coming in behind you that might inherit a micro fridge after you're done, um, it's usually like we find them in the dumpsters in May. Um, and that always makes me a little sad. So uh, definitely consider renting a, a micro fridge. 
Um, bedloft.com is our rental vendor. So if you're ordering a loft on that same website, you can rent a micro fridge and that will be in the room when you arrive. Um, and then we've got lists. You can find lists everywhere. Everybody publishes lists of supplies to bring for college. Um, just make sure those uh, bed sheets are twin XL. Okay. Um, if you have questions, I'm, I'm going to turn my screen share off. Um, my email address is displayed on the screen. Um, so I would say if you have personal questions that are just specific to you, email me. I'm, I'm really good at replying to students over email. Um, if you have questions that might be of interest to everybody, feel free to throw them in the chat and we'll answer them now for everybody. All right. And I am gonna take a break from talking and I'm gonna turn things over to my colleague in dining services, Amy Roars. Hi everybody. Just a quick little bit to share with you about dining services. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Like Chris said, my name is Amy Roars. I'm here in the accounts coordinator here in the dining office. If you have any questions or problems or issues, you're gonna be wanting to call me and I will help you work them out. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here with you guys. There we go. Sorry that you can't be here to enjoy our dining hall right now, but um, this is, gives you a little idea of what it's looking like. Uh, right now it's pretty empty. It is lunchtime, but we're going to fill up quick this fall and be ready for you guys to, to come and visit us. Um, the Gerber CSL Dining Hall has continuous service from open to close. We offer a four-week rotating menu cycle. With our many offerings, you can enjoy a lot of variety. Um, you'll even enjoy some special events uh, and themed meals throughout the year. We have Thanksgiving. We have a very good Christmas meal. Um, we also have what we call international dinner, where each one of our chefs and cooks takes a continent and presents a meal just for you guys to enjoy. Um, it's a lot of fun. And if you really are, if you're looking for a job, we love to have students come and work for us. Um, what is a meal plan? A meal plan is a combination of swipes and biking bucks that give you access to the dining hall. Uh, students living in first year residence or sophomores, those, are, those students are required to have a meal plan because there isn't a lot of cooking available in your resident halls and in your, your rooms. So we wanna make sure you're eating and you're eating well and you will be eating and you'll be eating well in here, trust me. Uh, commuter students, juniors and seniors, you have the option to not have a meal plan or to have a smaller plan, a block plan or to have just Viking Bucks or meal swipes. Um, all of our plans are on the website. Go ahead and take a look. You can always change your meal plan. You're gonna sign up for your meal plan when you do your housing application. You always have until the first two weeks of the term to go back in and make some changes. Uh, we always ask that you try out the meal plan. You're gonna be assigned the any 15 meals and it's 100 and $225 in Viking Bucks, $175 in Viking Bucks, I'm sorry. Um, you're gonna be assigned that as a first year or sophomore student. Try it, see how it works. You may find that you're not getting up in the morning and that you're not coming down for breakfast. Well, then maybe you wanna to switch to a smaller meal plan, the NE12. Or maybe you're finding that you wanna have all 19 of your meals every day or every week. Um, then you can switch up to a bigger plan. They're the same price, those three plans, but um, the number of Viking bake bucks and meal swipes changes. So that gives you a little bit of flexibility that way. But then what are meal swipes and Viking bucks? Meal swipes are, the, are attached to your card. When you come into the dining hall, you'll take the register, will take your card, they'll swipe it through, and then you'll have unlimited access to the food that we have here in the dining hall. You can also use those meal swipes at the snack bar, um, the brew, or the Westerland Market for meal plan exchange bundles, uh, which give you an entree, a side, and a, um, a drink. Or you have Viking Bucks to use. Now, Viking Bucks are like cash on your card. So you don't want to lose your card 
or if you do misplace your car, you want to let us know so that we can turn it off. Um, those Viking bucks are attached to your card and you can use them anywhere on campus uh, except for the bookstore, but you can also use them in the concession stands. So if you're at the game or you want to grab a quick bite at the Westerland Market, you've got a little extra on there for you to use. Now, if you're on the go and you need to grab something quick, we do allow carry out in the, uh, in the Gerber CSL. Uh, pictured here are the little box and mug that we, we give to every first year student. Um, and those are yours to keep, but you do have to hang on to them. We don't give you another one. Uh, you bring the box in, fill it up. We ask that you be able to close it. Um, you'd be surprised how tall you can make a sandwich at the deli. At the, the deli. Uh, when you take it with you, eat it, enjoy your, enjoy your meal, bring the box back. We give you a new box or we give you what we call a exchange card. And that exchange card, you can stick behind your ID and the next time you need a, a to-go box, you have it with you and you just bring it back and we give you another box, okay? It's a handy dandy way to encourage, encourage sustainability here in the dining hall. Uh, we don't have napkins and we, use, we don't have uh, plastic silverware to take out that isn't compostable or biodegradable, okay? Now, a lot of you, um, a lot of students on campus are dealing with food allergies or special diets. And we are very careful with, um, with food allergies. We ask that if you do have a food allergy, um, if you do need to set up a special dining program, that you meet with us at the beginning of the year. Uh, we have a manager whose specific job is to help coordinate and come up with a plan for that. Uh, we do have some students who come in every day, um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a special meal that's specially prepared so that we can keep their food allergy guidelines intact. We also work very hard to make sure that all of the signs that you see for food um, are correct. That if it is gluten-free, that it is vegan, vegetarian, or halal, that those are marked for you so it's easy for you to find. Also, anybody in a chef's coat, one of our black chef coats, should be able to answer questions for you. And if they can't answer your question, they will find somebody who can. Um, we wanna make sure that food security is, is one of our top priorities here. We wanna make sure that you guys eat because it's one less thing that you have to worry about when you're trying to get through college, okay? Um, on your screen right now are pictures of little icons that we use to, um, identify meat here, or meals here in the, the dining hall. So keep an eye out for that when you get a chance. Um, hopefully you'll be able to eat with us pretty soon. Uh, one of the places that you can enjoy our, our, our dining is um, Gus's Snack Bar. That is down campus. That is a kind of a fast food, uh, quick grab area um, that's in the Bruner Theater. They have daily specials double bacon cheeseburger one day, walking tacos, which are a huge hit. Uh, we also have fish sandwiches on Friday, but it's a quick place to grab a bite if you are stuck down campus if, in your classrooms, okay? The other two areas would be the Brew by the Slough, which is our coffee shop. They're open till 10 o'clock most evenings. Um, during finals, they're open quite a bit later, just in case you need to grab a cup of coffee to stay up. Uh, then if you still need to grab something between 10 and midnight, we have the Westerland Market. They open at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and then stay open till midnight. It's a great place to grab a frozen pizza, Whitey's ice cream, soda pop, anything that you, um, you need to help your, help your body keep going. Um, we have a lot of different things here on campus that you can enjoy as far as food-wise, and we try to keep it interesting. We also love it if you give us some input. You'll find a little applicate, a little place to give comments and to leave information in the Augie Dining page. And if you get a chance, send us some recipes. Sometimes we like to work those in so that you can feel more at home. Um, back to you guys. If uh, you have any questions, please let us know. Awesome.
Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Chris. I'm now officially hungry after you talked about all of that deliciousness. And there are some things that I certainly crave from the Gerber Center as well. And I know a lot of our students and our alumni have their favorites. So that was so fun. But I want to encourage you all to um, begin using the chat to ask our questions. We do have about five or so minutes to um, open it up for questions that Chris or Amy can answer for you. Um, Chris was a rock star in the chat and started answering some of them that came through, but in case the chat is not coming up, if you're on a phone or something, um, there was some questions about um, selecting your roommate. If you are paired with somebody else, would they add a third person? Um, and Chris assured us that they would not. If you pick a group of two, they will not add a third. Um, and he's also encouraging people to go to bedloft.com, select Illinois, and then Augustana to find out all of those different rates. If you want to loft your bed, if you want to um, rent a micro fridge or whatever the case may be. So um, if you haven't already been browsing the chat, certainly do. Chris was answering some questions. But do you guys have any questions um, for any of our presenters? Shoot them in the chat. Um, I know Amy answered a bunch of our frequently asked questions that we normally get from students. Um, but Amy, if you could maybe touch on like the hours of operation, that's usually a pretty um, big question. Um, what time can students usually go to the Gerber, things like that? Well, the dining hall is open from seven o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night every day. And it is continuous. We are always have something out here for you guys to eat, whether it's at the breakfast nook salad bar or over at American Grill. We've always got something good. Awesome.